doctors around the world are struggling to cure some secondary illnesses that have uh, popped up that people are contracting while they are treating the coronavirus. And those illnesses may be contributing to an already growing antibiotic, antibiotic rather, resistant pandemic. Maren McKenna is here to explain. She is a contributor for Wired Magazine. Uh, Maren, so interesting. I mean, it, you know, I just went through this whole litany of things, um, you know, from defeating Nazi Germany to trying to defeat this pandemic. And now, in your reporting, you're talking about uh, the, the bacteria that may become resistant to antibiotics. Um, so explain that and explain how they spread. So thanks for having me on, and thanks for drawing some attention to what's really a second pandemic uh, that in moving in slow motion across the world. Antibiotic resistance, super simply, is disease bacteria's facility for learning to defend themselves against the things that we send at them to kill them, which is primarily antibiotics. It's estimated right now that 700,000 people a year around the world die of antibiotic resistance more than 35,000 just in the United States. And it's been predicted that that death toll, if we don't change these trends, could rise up to 10 million people a year. So while we don't hear anywhere near as much about this as we do about COVID-19, it's a very, very serious problem. And it's possible that what we're doing to help cure people who have COVID-19 may be making this second pandemic worse. So let's sort of explain that. I think, you know, people might have a concept of, of what it means, what an antibiotic resistant bug is or how that occurs. But can you just sort of explain, you know, how that happens and the fallout of a, of a bug emerging and then spreading that is antibiotic resistant? Sure. So we overuse and misuse antibiotics in all aspects of our lives, in healthcare, in hospitals, in community healthcare, in agriculture, where we feed them to meat animals. We allow antibiotic residue to waft out of factories where antibiotics are made. And what happens is that disease bacteria are exposed to antibiotics in those ways. They develop mutations that allow them to protect themselves against the attack of antibiotics. And then they pass those mutations through the bacterial world so that even bacteria that were not actually in the person who got the antibiotics can learn to defend themselves. So that, for instance, the main organism that causes pneumonia in the United States is resistant to the first antibiotic that doctors would choose to treat it with in some parts of the US, 50% of the time. That means that if you're going to get treated for pneumonia, whether the drug works or not, is essentially the flip of a coin. <laughs> wow. Um, so, so many of the patients being treated for uh, coronavirus, for COVID-19, are also being treated for secondary illnesses by using antibiotics. Uh, we know you can't treat the coronavirus with antibiotics, so, so why is this dangerous? It's really important to say to start with, as you just did, so thanks for saying that, that coronavirus is a viral illness and antibiotics don't work against viruses. And so there's a little disconnect, I think, in thinking about this second problem. But what's happening is that very often when people uh, have infections in their lungs, when they're put on ventilators and they're put on oxygen, they may develop what's a secondary pneumonia. And that pneumonia is often bacterial because bacteria really like that sort of messy, mucky fluid that collects in the lungs. A lot of the things that are usually done to diagnose those pneumonias and figure out the appropriate treatment are really too risky for healthcare workers to do right now. Things like sending a scope down into the lungs or taking some sort of biological samples. So patients all over the world, and there's beginning to be good evidence of this, are being given antibiotics as a protection when they're put on ventilators, which is not something that medicine would normally do. That means there's a lot more antibiotics being used they may be being used for things that they don't actually work against, but the bacteria are still in those people's bodies just waiting for that exposure to womp up their defenses. And so there's, as there are these pieces of evidence around the world, early papers being published, in some cases 90% or 95% of people being treated for COVID in hospitals around the world are getting antibiotics as well. Researchers who've been studying this slow second pandemic are saying, look, we need to cure these people, absolutely. But at the same time, we really have to keep watch because it could 
really increase antibiotic resistance. And we have no new antibiotics to counter these whomped up bugs because antibiotic resistance has also undermined the economic incentives for making antibiotics. And there are a lot fewer new drugs on the market than there used to be. So then, I mean, is anybody talking about what do you do? I mean, you don't want to cure the COVID-19 in a patient and have them die of something else that they picked up. Is there a way to combat both COVID and whatever underlying diseases are possible without overusing antibiotics? Yeah, it's a really naughty question. And the reason it's so naughty is because one of the things that we need is you know, so we've been talking for months now about COVID tests, right? And how much we need rapid tests for COVID, for the coronavirus, to know when people are infected. We also need those kind of rapid tests for antibiotic resistant bacteria. So we could say right at the bedside, oh, this person is infected with this, this, or this. Here's the right drug. Now, there's been a couple of policy moves over the past couple of years to stimulate manufacturing of rapid diagnostics and of new antibiotics, but it's really hard to get policymakers to focus on anything else right now. In fact, one such measure to improve the marketplace for antibiotic makers was actually taken out of the coronavirus stimulus bill at the last minute. Wow. Um, it's a really, really interesting story. I hope you sort of keep on it and keep watching to see what actually emerges uh, when we get more numbers. But thank you so much, Maren. Thanks for having me.